add a source. So add source, we'll do a little screen capturing. So what do I want to capture? We'll capture that. All right. It's a little small, so I'll make it bigger so you can see it. And maybe we'll get rid of my name because you all know who I am. Oops, come back. Like I say, not prepared ahead of time. Okay, so this uh, this is Twitter. <laughs> this is not Grasshopper. Um, but let let me pop over into Grasshopper. Oops. So you're not going to get to see the login because I'm already logged into it. But this is what it looks like at the moment. It doesn't really look like much. Um, but uh, on the uh, left hand side here are the various things that I can use it for. Um, and these are things that I can make. I wish, I wish I had a way of making that bigger. There must be a way of making that bigger. There we go. <laughs> uh, so, um, these are, are different things that I make. I can make pages, post-its, posts, presentations, etc. Uh, the posts are something that everybody will be familiar with from my newsletter. Here's a post that I made earlier today on the Empathetic School. It's going to go in my newsletter this afternoon. So ignore that. I'm always messing around and editing it. So here it is being edited. Uh, I wonder what that looks like. Oh, I see. It's going to stay with the... Uh... <laughs> All right. So here it is being edited. And this is a very ordinary content editor. Uh, it also allows me to upload photos. There's a photo that I've in fact already uploaded. It gives me a preview version of it. Uh, here's a plain big page to write um, and a place to publish. And I can also publish these things on different pages. So here's a list of pages that are on my website. And one page you might see, for example, is OL Daily, which is my newsletter. And again, we'll ignore the, the alerts here. I've been monitoring what I'm doing. So here's OL Daily. There's the, the page for editing OL Daily. And the way my pages work is they grab content from the database and display it on the page. So if we look at a preview of the page, here's the preview of today's newsletter. And you can see that the empathetic school that I was showing you earlier is nicely formatted. There's the picture that I uploaded, etc. Um, and so I can send that out as a newsletter or as RSS or anything like that. Um, right, so let's go back to Grasshopper. I can I configure my page as a newsletter as well right here. These are the, pay, the days that it publishes. This is the time that it goes out. Uh, I enable this page for subscriptions, etc. And indeed, if you create a new account on my system, you're auto-logged in. So that's what we're at so far. Um, now, what I'm up to here is I, I want to use this, as I say, for a wider personal learning environment. So it's not just about aggregating content or making posts and sending newsletters. Um, this here is a list of feeds. These feeds are sources of content. So I've got a whole bunch of them, 7,000 feeds. Now, I don't follow 7,000 feeds. Right now, I've got a much smaller subset of those. 
So here we'll go. I'll list some of the feeds and oops, sorry about that. Uh, find again. Uh, sorry, list feed. It shouldn't give me the option to search by name because that doesn't exist. But so here are some feeds that I'm actually aggregating. Uh, let's take a look at David Guerin. Guerin or Guerin? I don't know. So here's the feed. And ignore again the pop ups. And uh, so you can see the feed here. This is the information about the feed. It's pretty blank. Here's some classification. So it's a blog. It's in K-12 on administration in K-12. Uh, but the most interesting bit is the harvester. And this is the grasshopper harvester. Uh, it, in fact, harvests a fairly wide set of data, uh, including RSS, Atom, OAI, JSON, Twitter, Facebook, etc. I even have it set up so that I can harvest videos off YouTube. It takes those videos, downloads the MP4s, extracts the audio from the MP4, saves it as an MP3, and creates a radio station out of that. And I can listen to it. Oops. Well, I can listen to it when it's working. <laughs> Uh, I don't have any current content in the radio station, so I guess I can't listen to it now, just as well. Um, so anyhow, but this is just a regular blog, and so I'm just going to analyze this feed, and here it is. So it harvests, it analyzes all the content. Um, what's different about this harvester than most feed readers is that it gathers the different pieces that go together to make up the various uh, web pages or posts etc that are out there so if it finds media it saves the media if it finds photographs it saves those links etc and so the idea here is that I'm using this open harvest to create what is essentially a graph of related materials. If we go back and, and look at the post, here's a post. We'll go back and look at the empathetic school again. Of course, clicking through all of those because I wasn't prepared for this at all. Uh, so here we go. So here's the school. I mentioned there's we've got a couple of authors here, Caroline Tomlinson and Michael Murphy. It's pu published by ASCD, so if I look here, I can go into Carol Ann Tomlinson's record. Those alerts are really annoying, aren't they? So here she is, and uh, so here's a couple. She's done a couple of posts um, that I've covered on the newsletter. Um, as well, I can look at, uh, so let's, let's go to this other one here. I'm really getting annoyed by that. And, and we'll have a look here. So this is the ASCD in service. We'll go to that. And see if there's any posts here. Well, just the one. So it's kind of a small little collection of things. But the idea here is that I've got a graph that links uh, feeds and it links people and it links well all kinds of things here are some of the things that we can look for companies concepts courses institutions journals etc and the point of grasshopper is that this list is configurable you can make this list yourself and analyze and organize different kinds of data um, so the way I, I, I make this work is through uh, a way of organizing the different data types. And so here's the data type for feed, for example. And once again, we'll have to go through all of these. <laughs> so here's my feed data type. And I'll edit my feed data type. And this simply shows how to display it. 
but here's the record that I keep in the background and if I go in to more database functions clicking through can you see I, I keep hitting that same function over and over and over again so here's the database and I can create new tables import or export data etc and this is where the openness of open educational resources comes into play for my system in particular what I'm trying to do is to figure out a way of exchanging different data types directly from one person to another so for example um, I have authors that I write about and what I want to do is share my authors, my list of authors, with other people using other instances of Grasshopper. So I publish that and make that available on my site so that their system can pick up this list of authors and import it and now you and I have the same list of authors. Or we have a list of authors that sort of overlaps who we are. Um, overlaps who we are overlaps overlaps with each other a web page it's, it's a very long list that's why it's slowing down my browser there we go so here's the author data oh, I backed up but I can also if I want I can also import a list of authors from someone else using the same sort of function And so here we, here we have the, uh, the database thingy again. And so I can import either from a URL or you know, from, uh, from a file or whatever. Uh, right now it's just tab, common, delimited, and JSON. And of course you saw RSS, etc. And I intend to extend that, but really I'd like to work in JSON through most of the stuff. The, uh, the purpose of having all of these different data types is that I want to be able to find much more than just the regular sorts of data. I want the personal learning environment to be relevant on a day-to-day -day basis for me. So another type of resource that's very important is the course. And you know, we've, we've talked about MOOCs and, and talked about even some of these courses on Moodle, etc. So Grasshopper harvests a list of courses from various providers, you know, Coursera, Udacity, uh, OpenLearn, etc. And I think these are all edX courses. I have a, a test set in, installed right now. So, um, so I can look into one of these courses and uh, here, here's the information about the course. And you know it's, it's kind of interesting because it's just another piece of data, just like any other piece of data. Or I can access the course directly. Here it is uh, in my reader. And I'll just move that over so you can see it a bit better. So there's the reader. Now I've got the course. And then I can access the course right in Grasshopper. So here I am. I'm in the reader in Grasshopper accessing my edX course so thank you edX I could enroll now what I want to do I haven't done this yet but what I want to do is when I access a course from edX or when I access a text maybe from OpenStax or whatever I don't just you know access the front page of it and then use their environment to continue on as I would have to do here um, rather, what I want to be able to do is access various sets of data, the various pages, the various resources, etc., integrate them into my already existing database of resources so that I can link them up with other resources so that they can be searchable as part of my overall set of, course, of resources and then take the course entirely within my own environment. So I'm working in my environment doing stuff with the course, which means that when I'm going to write something for the course, for example, I will make a post 
uh, or I will make a presentation or something like that. And part of the reason for that is when I do that, um, you know, I, I can integrate different kinds of contents into my course, into my presentation as I wish. And I've already got all the resources right here um, ready to work with. I can you know, have my, my list of readings, list of resources, drag them and drop them into whatever I'm working on for the course. And of course, as I'm working on the course, I'm creating new resources for myself in order to um, you know, prepare myself for the future. I have this base of stuff that I've created. It doesn't just have to be presentations. I could do the same thing with bits of code, for example, and build up a code library over time that's in the left-hand side that I can drag into the program that I'm working in my writer, or little bits of images or whatever. <coughs> I, I don't want to limit myself here. The other thing I want to do is also connect to uh, opportunities. So here's a list of jobs. Now, I just grabbed this from monster.com, although there are multiple other uh, places that you can get jobs. So, and again, I want it to be so that I can click on the job, access the job, and the, for some reason it's not accessing at the moment. It was, at, there we go. Uh, and then apply for the job right here in the uh, personal learning environment. Oh, I guess you can't really see it there, can you? Uh, still not going to let's, let's see if we can. There we go. You might be able to see the little apply thing at the bottom. So apply for the job. And when you apply for the job, information about you gets sent directly to uh, the employer without you having to, like, build new CVs, etc. each time you apply. Now this this is job listings, but we don't need to limit our imagination to that. Um, in the Government of Canada, one of the projects that we've been working on is something called Micro Missions. Uh, it's a very large organization, many different departments, and in some cases uh, a person might be working in their department, but have less work for the time that they have. So really, you know, they they come in for 40 hours, but they're only doing 20 hours worth of work. Or they might work in a seasonal department or whatever. Other departments, by contrast, are short-staffed. You know, you think of Revenue Canada, tax time, or they're always looking for people. And there's all kinds of cases like that. So what Treasury Branch, which is a branch of the Canadian government, has done is they've set up a listing of short-term opportunities for federal employees to go from one department to another department, work for a short term in the other department, and then go back to their home department. So micro missions, right? Um, so how do you find the right person for the right micro mission? Well, this is how. Um, you have a list of opportunities that people can find, click on the opportunity, apply for it, etc. On the other side, and this is part of the work that other people here are doing, um, the people who are offering the listings, if they have a database, uh, you know, a voluntarily contributed to database of people with credentials, they can look through that database and see the people who are qualified and able to work in your department for a micro mission. Uh, freelancers might find contracts that way. I'm not really big on the gig economy, but this would make it a little bit more stable, um, etc. Right? Uh, uh, people, musicians could find musician partners. There's any sort of search according to qualifications could be done in that way. And that's where the other part of the personal comes in. And I wonder, yeah, here we go. So this is the other, I have no idea why it says Air Canada down there. That is really weird. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll assume that has something to do with uh, with Monster. Yeah, yeah, I'll bet you that's what it is. So I'll just get rid of that if I can. 
yeah. <laughs> okay, there's, there's still quirks in the system. So here's the other side of the personal learning environment. Um, so this is my information. I have my personal profile right now. It doesn't say very much. It just says I'm me. Uh, but I can edit my uh, profile um, to uh, put in information about who I am, what I do, etc. Uh, I can manage my visibility, manage my, my web information, manage my location, etc. Other things that I can do uh, are my, my publishing options. Um, so for example, uh, here we have information about uh, the, uh, the newsletters, the different uh, newsletters that I do, uh, just basic stuff, where they're coming from and, and the ability to send them and things like that. Uh, but also my social media accounts, and I'm not going to scroll down that because I have proprietary uh, social media keys on this that I don't want to display. Meetings, um, so I can start up and join a meeting in big blue button. Again, I won't do that because I don't think they're expecting me. Um, manage subscribers to my newsletter or anything else, etc. Um, my personal portfolio is the thing or one of the things that I might send to uh, potential employers. Uh, so here's my portfolio. Um, so it can display my publications, my presentations, my newsletter, and when, I'm, when I've got this set up it'll show my badges, my courses, and whatever else I think is relevant to show in my portfolio. Um, do, what did I do to myself here? Let's back up. Well, I've done something. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, I see. Duh. Sometimes I'm not that bright. Uh, social network, etc. I'm not sure what I've got in there. Uh, also, because it should be uh, an environment that is uh, based in community and interactive, I link as well with my social network. Uh, this is this is just an iframe embed, but eventually what I want to do is have it uh, connect directly to uh, the social network. This is Mastodon. It's an alternative to Twitter. Um, so here are some messages that I can be reading in Mastodon. Here are some notifications. It's the no local timeline. I better not linger on that, etc. So that's the overall idea. You could probably think of a whole bunch of other things to add to it. I know I have um, things like uh, things like projects and tasks, uh, things like cohorts and classes and groups, etc. But the the main point here is that it's a different interpretation of learning in the sense that it's the, the, the learning environment isn't a place where you are necessarily presented with content and then you absorb that content and do a test and hand in that test. Yes, we, we can do courses. Uh, you know, there, there's, there's no doubt about it. The, the courses are certainly possible. But the purpose of the learning environment is to help you as you do things in the world, to, to help you make things, create things, share things, interact with people. And the concept of an OER or an open educational resource or a resource in general is this thing that you share back and forth with this people in this network of interconnected and interactive personal learning environments. 
still a work in progress. It's still a concept in progress. Maybe it'll, it'll work. Maybe it won't work. Uh, but that's what I'm working on. And I thought you might like to see it. And that pretty much takes me to the end of my time. But I have some time, a uh, couple of minutes uh, for comments, questions, etc. So does, if anyone would like to jump in, uh, please do. I forgot to share my screen this whole time, didn't I? Whatever you did, it worked really well, Stephen. Oh, it did? Yeah, it did. Yeah. No, we could see it really well. Oh, okay. I could. <laughs> I'll oh. speak for everybody else. <laughs> All right. I have a quite just one question, Stephen. Yeah. What is the, what is the your favorite feature about Grasshopper? Like, what does it enable for you that makes you really, really happy? Uh, well, that's a good question. It makes it really easy to create content and distribute it. And I know that doesn't sound like a one thing, but I do a newsletter with six to eight items every day. And Grasshopper takes it from be taking me a half an hour to do an item with all kinds of gathering and writing and pasting and cutting and changes that to about 10 minutes. And I don't need to focus on the mechanics all I need to focus on is the content, what my thoughts are about the content. And the technology really just does sort of disappear um, when, I'm, when, when I'm doing my newsletter. And I, if that's the one thing I would say is, is the big thing for me. But, you know, I'm in a network of one user right now. Um, you know, because Grasshopper <laughs> isn't really widely used. Well, it's not used at all. So that might change if and when other people use it. But right now, it makes it really easy for me to share. Great, thanks. Anyone else? If not, uh, it is 5 p.m. my time, or I guess uh, 10 p.m. UTC. That's my time as a um, uh, moderator person so I'm going to pass it over to Jenny who's going to pass it over to our next moderator and uh, thanks everyone thanks to the presenters during my two hours thanks to Jenny for organizing it and I'll see you on the internet thank you so much Stephen very much Stephen. or you can probably just hand it right over to James <laughs> Maybe could. Yeah. Hi, Jameson. Hi, how's it going? <clears throat> Great. Everybody hanging in there? We're, we're kind of nearing the end <laughs> of the, the 24 hours.